So after picking up the ADS 2700W, I decided I would go through and set it up the way I needed to be set up and then show you guys what I went through and how difficult or easy it was depending on your skill level. Um, a little bit of network knowledge is involved in order to make this do what you want it to do, um, at least what I wanted it to do, which is this function. Whenever we get any piece of paper that's important that we need to save, we scan it and we automatically store it on our network server. Um, we have an actual Linux server in our house, uh, but this would work on any external hard drive or any, any network shared drive. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I did. I'm running on Ubuntu um, 16.04. I've got Samba set up for sharing. Um, and these are all you know, a little bit more advanced networking details that you don't necessarily need to know. However, if you do have the desire to put documents directly into a network share, you need to have a few things already set up. First, you need to have that destination. So there needs to be an external drive on your network, network attached storage. You need to have some sort of USB drive attached to a system that's quasi-permanent. Um, and you need to have a user set up on that system that has access to those folders. And in my instance, I had to create a user in Linux and that user has a username and password and then I had to create a shared folder and grant permissions to that folder for that user. Then I went ahead and got ready uh, to set up the brother. So unboxing was simple, just popped it out and plugged it in. It was really easy. It's a Wi-Fi unit. Um, you'll notice when you set up your Wi-Fi that it doesn't say wireless LAN or Wi-Fi. The button for setting it up is WLAN. The interface is a little clunky. The graphics aren't that uh, crisp, but it works. So what you'll do is you'll get your document scanner set up on your Wi-Fi network, and then you'll need to figure out what the um, IP address is on that unit. Your router is going to assign it an automatic IP address and give it an address on your network, just like every other device you have in your house. So on the brother uh, document scanner, you'll be able to go into the WLAN settings and look at the IP address. Once you have that IP address, write it down and go over to your computer or mobile device or wherever you can find a web browser and you're going to go straight up to the browser address and type in that IP address. So in my case it was 192.168.1.51. Now I chose this manually after the fact. So after I set up the document scanner on the router I went back and I logged into the router directly and I told the router Anytime this device connects, I want to make sure that it's always the same number. And you can do that with static mapping inside of your router. Um, even the Apple Airport will do that. Um, but uh, I do that because it's a little bit more solid. It's, it's always the same device. I never have, any, I never have to guess. Um, and I'll always know where it is. And uh, it, it will always be able to connect, in theory. So... First thing we do is we log into that interface, and you know it's a really basic. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it, um, and you can you can uh, notice right off the bat you have access to a few things by default, but there is a login box, and I had to do a little bit of hunting, but I found a Swedish document that says that the uh, the default password was changed to init pass i n i t p a s s. Um, so what I'll do, uh, first let's go through this. We've got the status, we've got auto refresh. These are all personal preferences. Here's the information about it, about the device, maintenance information. Um, contact and location, you can put that in if you'd like. How long it takes before it sleeps. Whether or not it powers off automatically or not. Um, a few settings on the panel and any scheduled maintenance alerts. Um, a lot of this stuff you'll probably ignore, it won't matter, but let's go up here to log in and type in INIT, INITPASS. Click the login arrow, and you'll now see that you've got some tabs across the top. Now I discovered a few things about this interface, which really is kind of uh, subpar, um, and I'll show you right now. We'll go to the address book. Now we've got room for 300 addresses here, which is ridiculous. We don't need that many addresses. But here's the first thing I did. 
I went ahead and I did, uh, let's say, user at domain.com. Now this would be your email address, and that would be me. And then I could do other user at domain.com, and that would be maybe my wife, right? And then I'll click save. Now I've got those added to the system, added to the machine as destinations for scanning. Okay, so then I notice down here that there's a group feature. So maybe I want to send a document to both of us. So I'll hit set up groups, and then I click on G1. I want that to be one, and I want this to be maybe our group. Sorry about that clicking in the grandfather clock. And now here I'll click select members, and this is where I notice a problem. It, it automatically assumes because we chose 001 for the group that that's where we're going to put the group definition. So all of these 300 address spots also include the groups that you create. So you have to kind of plan ahead because this won't be selectable. We can select this, but we cannot select this. And there's nothing else to select. So what I did is I ended up submitting this and then I went back to address one through 20 and I noticed that the group had taken spot one. So I just put myself at domain.com down here and saved it again. Submit. Now we're both in as individuals and we also have a group destination. All right, that's the address book. It's kind of annoying, but it's there. Email, not gonna bother setting up email right now, but it can be done. You would need to know this information and this, if you have a Gmail account, it's gonna be specific to Gmail and that's available on Google. You can, you can search for it. If you're running your own email server, you may know this information already. Um, and this will be for uh, notifications. Let's see, what kind of notifications can we have here? Email, email send. Well, looks like I don't really care about that. I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, let's go to the next tab here. This is the scan tab. This is where you can set up the destinations. This is when you put your, when you put your document in, you can tell it where, where to go. For my case, I wanted to scan to a network location, and this is confusing. Scan to FTP, SFTP, or network. File transfer protocol, secure file transfer protocol, or network. Network is what I want. I have a network, I wanna put it on the network, it's in a network share folder, it's all I need to do. And then I saw this, network profile. So this is a little strange, I'm not sure what to do here. So the first thing I thought was, well, okay, maybe a profile needs to be built before I can tell it what to do. So I went ahead and hit this profile here, and I already created a profile on profile one, and I've been unable to figure out how to delete it to show you how to recreate it. Uh, and I think that's a flaw in the software, but here we go. So let me click on profile one, and it'll show you that I filled in master docs. Um, the host address is my server. The username is the user I created on the server, and that is also their password. The location is the master documents forward slash inbox. That's the actual destination for the share. And all this stuff is personal preference. Now when I click submit, what it's gonna do is test it. Oops, I gotta put in the password again. And we'll submit and test it. Are you sure you wanna test? And I'm looking at this thinking, test scan to FTP. That's not what I wanted. I wanted network. So I'll click yes, and I'm probably gonna get an error. It looks like I've frozen something up here. Oh, that's what happens when you're not patient. Let's do that again. Go here, so we go to profile one, I'll put the password in again, and then we'll click submit, test, and let's see what happens. Test error, authentication error. So then I notice, well, wait a minute. This is not a, an FTP server. I'm trying to go to a network share. So that made me look at the, a couple of things in here. And I ended up on the scan to FTP, SFTP network page. And notice that I can choose for profile one, what type of connection it's gonna be. Oh, okay, now I get it. So profile one is gonna be a network folder. So we'll select network 
and then click submit and that changes. Now when we go over to the network profile we see network here whereas we see FTP on these others. So I could show you again if I went over to network and clicked on profile 2 and set it to network and then click submit and I'll go back to the network profile. Now I have that option here on profile 2. That could be another folder. So let's go to the network link here. It's a little confusing because there's so many things. I, I would assume that this is FTP, SFTP, and network profile. So let's just click network profile. We'll make sure that we give it a name. This is what's going to show up on the screen. Actually, that's not true. I thought it would be what shows up on the screen on the scanner, but you actually have to type in another description, as I discovered. The network folder path is going to be the full um, universal network uh, URL, the internal network URL of that share. And this, in this case, it's the machine address, then slash share folder slash subfolder under that share folder. And once that's set, I can come down here to authentication, put in the username. You can notice that it's a little different than the FTP. Type in the password, confirm the password, and then click submit and see what happens when we test it. Please wait, test OK, great. Now we know that we've been set up for our shared folder. And when we go to the unit, we'll be able to test it by putting a document in and choosing a network profile uh, scan to network folder and choose this destination and it will just go where it's supposed to go. If you get an error on the device, uh, which isn't likely at this point, then something's gone wrong. Um, so basically that is the, uh, that's how simple it is to set up a shared folder. Provided, like I said before, provided your shared folder is set up correctly, you can get to it, your username and password can log into it, and it, you know you have access to uh, to read and write from that folder, R read from and write to that folder. Uh, let's hop over to the administrator uh, administrator page. This is where you can set a password for the device. Uh, this this uh, I believe it changes the default password to what you want here. Um, you can restrict certain functions. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use this or not. Probably not. Date and time, you might want to set that to, let's see, we're negative seven here. And 1 1 2018. Let's, can we do this? Can we synchronize with the. Let's see what happens. Submit OK. Now we're in network. Date and time. No, it doesn't look like it changed. It is 253. Submit. Yeah. I love it when it tells you things like that. Okay, log back in, go to the administrator tab, date and time. 8 16 2019, UTC minus 7. Yeah, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, so that's where we're at. That's what we're on. Auto daylight is off. Good, so that worked. Um, and then uh, under the net reset menu, I would imagine, yeah, that's where you can reset everything. And under the network tab, you have uh, the interface settings. You have uh, your MAC address. That's what you can use to tell the router to always load the same IP address for this machine. Um, this is where you can enable or disable certain protocols on your network, um, depending on how you want to set it up. Uh, I don't have any wires connected, so it's it's right now it's all in wired wireless mode. Uh, here's the wireless information, and. Uh, Looks like I can uh, block specific devices from getting to the uh, scanner, but I don't necessarily need to do that. And that's it. So right now, my device is set up to scan documents to a single network share on my network, and I don't have to worry about paper anymore. So this will be mounted straight on top of my shredder, and I'll throw a, a paper in, scan it, it'll save to the folder, um, and then I'll throw it in the shredder. After that, I go back to the folder and I might readjust where it is or tag the file, rename the file, etc. And I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thanks.